Okay, so um, to look at all the images on this case, uh, we saved them, saved all the measurement positions in DICOM, uh, so we can post-process it. Go to active images on this dog, it's a mitral insufficiency case with volume overload. And here we save the M mode, and we know it's in correct position because the cursor is perpendicular to the septum and perpendicular to the free wall. Even though the left ventricle is enlarged, left atrium is enlarged, and the dog was rotated because of this volume overload, we adapted to it to make sure that the cursor went perpendicular to the septum and the free wall. And we can see that that's the case because the systolic contraction of the septum is equal in the proper position lined up correctly with the uh, free wall systolic contraction. So if we're offline, what will happen is this will contract here and this will contract here and they won't be in the same spot. So from here we can do our measurements given that the animal's in respiratory distress so we got what we needed, we saved it, we didn't take time doing our measurements there, we can do it on post-processing. So we push measure or calcs right above the trackball here, we go to LV study, and we get this drop down menu here and we go to the septum, leading edge, to leading edge, internal diameter, free wall, then systole. And if you look at this horizontal line here, if we have an area we want to measure and it isn't all that clear, we just follow this horizontal line to see where the leading edge should be. And then we can kind of cheat or skew a little bit and use that position based on where the following contractions are. So after we've done diastole, we go to systole, and the systolic point is going to be lower than the diastolic point. So the same point on the leading edge of the septum in systole to the peak. Now the peak kind of falls out here, so I find out where the peak is going to be on the other one and the prior one by this horizontal line, so I can use that and come down to the internal diameter in systole, which obviously is less than the internal diameter in diastole, and then the free wall in systole. And then I go peak to peak for heart rate. And I double check my IVSD and FWD should be about the same. It's a little bit higher, but still relatively acceptable. In this case, 0 0.58, 0 0.72. And I look at it and it's like, well, maybe I, maybe I gave the free wall too much here on the, um, maybe I, this is a little bit of papillary or something, so we may, uh, but we may, um, we may keep that or we may go and redo it. So we'll save that one. I'll clear it. And maybe I'll take another contraction and I'll just scroll back and uh, do it again. LV study. There we go. Diastole, septum in the uh, near um, leading edge to leading edge, internal diameter, free wall, systolic, septum, internal diameter, free wall, peak to peak, 0 0.67, 0 0.67, that's actually better, so I'll take this one and this is the one that I'll report out. Fractional shortening, 65% makes sense because there's a lot of difference between this uh, diastole and systole, so we should accept or we should expect a uh, fractional shortening that's really high. So I'll save that one. So that's LVM mode. So now we're going to go look at the next measurement. This would be EPSS, and I look at my M mode and I see that I'm going through the septum pretty perpendicular and I'm catching the um, I'm catching the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve. And I look at my best one here, and you can see the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve is touching the septum. So technically, the EPSS should be essentially zero. So we save that. If this were a DCM case, there would be a wide space between the septum and the, um, uh, the mitral valve anterior leaflet, which is typical of DCM. So I'll look through my next... I look for another measurement, LA to AO. It's the June Boon method. I look at my position here, and it's coming through the aortic valve, looks pretty decent. A little bit mushy here, I'll take the best one. This is opening of the aortic valve and closure of the aortic valve. Maybe this one, potentially that one. Let me see if I have one that's a little bit better. That one looks a little bit better, so I'll probably take this one. 
So LA to AO June Boone. So I'll come over here. And I kind of like this one. So I'll take leading edge to leading edge at the end of the aortic valve closure. And the maximum left atrial size, leading edge to leading edge, 1.81, which makes sense because the dog is volume overload. So I'll save that one. If I have a couple more of those, I will uh, measure them as well. Now I'm going to look for an LA max position. This looks like a good one. So I saved this. You can see this. Mitral valve prolapse and ruptured chordae tendine. You have this little appendage going on here. So the LA max is taken when the mitral valve is closed. And this mitral valve never closed. There's never a complete apposition here. That's about as close as it gets. So we take a measurement of left atrium, which the atrial septum is deviating here, and it's kind of going off the screen. But we can take the left atrial max measurement here, internal edge to internal edge, and you can see that it is a parallel line with the mitral valve annulus. So our LA max is 3.62 on this. So we'll save that one. And our last measurement is heart base, LA to AO. Let's see if we have one of those somewhere. Return, no. Here's another LA Max that we can use in a different position. Or here, septum, or atrial septum to free wall parallel with the microvalve annulus. So it's a little bit of a different position, and we get a smaller measurement. Another dog with an LA or LA to AO in the heart base view, and we try to get the three valves of the Mercedes-Benz sign in line at the heart base. And what we want to do is measure from the internal diameter of the aorta, to internal edge to internal edge, and along with the internal edge to internal edge of the left atrium, so we have LA to AO heart base. Um, so those are the basic uh, measurements that we do uh, in M mode and in B mode and that we can report in our uh, reports and then follow up on those same measurements as the pathology progresses.